Hey everybody, it's Elias Pinacles from Wireless Insider, and today I have with me the brand new Samsung Galaxy Note 2, straight from Samsung. This massive box only indicated by a massive picture of the phone it means it's going to be a big phone indeed. Let's go ahead and take a look at the contents. This will be a full in depth review of multimedia, hardware, software, and everything else in between. Taking a look, we are greeted right away with the device itself a glorious five and a half inch touchscreen. Uh, we'll get to that in just one second. Going through the packaging, we have the insert books, I don't think you can read that, uh, a mass battery here of 3100 milliamp hours for a very large phone, so at least it's consistent. <laughs> we have a micro USB data cable, the charging brick, which is, you know, kind of what they're going for nowadays, at least with the Galaxy S3. Uh, same thing as that one, uh, stereo headphones with multimedia controls, if you see those buttons there, very nice, and silicone earbuds so you can fit into your ear. So let's get this ad here and take a look at the device itself. So let's zoom in a bit. So this is an enormous display. I mean, to get an idea, in terms of resemblance, here's the Galaxy S3. This is the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. You can notice that there are a lot of features or things in common physically and cosmetically with both devices. They did keep the physical button here, just made it a bit larger on the Galaxy Note 2. Uh, you have the camera, proximity sensor, and hidden LED indicator in the same position. The cameras pretty much look similar, just a little side by side. The only difference here is, you know, speakers at the bottom and it's rounded here, which is very nice so that it stays off the table and audio can be, uh, I guess, listened to or heard <laughs> and not obscured by any surface. So yeah, very similar in physical appearance. Uh, taking a look at the front, you do have two capacitive touch buttons, which you will not notice until the device turns on, one for back and one for menu. The left, you have volume up and volume down. The top, you have 3.5 millimeter headphone jack as well as a secondary microphone on the right power button and lock button and the bottom micro USB charging port with the primary cam uh, sorry the primary uh, microphone right there 8 megapixel camera 1080p quality front facing camera is 720p facing or uh, 720p video quality at 2 megapixels so very nice very massive uh, it opens with a little tab here you see how exactly ah, there we go Sounds like you're breaking it, but you're not. It's just the way it is. There's an NFC transmitter communicator right built into the battery plate. And if we put the battery in here, you get a good idea just how big this thing is. I mean, you know, it's bigger than the display on the bolt. <laughs> Very big battery. And uh, there's a speakerphone, as well as the S Pen stylus, which I will demonstrate in just one moment. So let's put this back on here. I'm going to time the amount of time it takes the Galaxy Note 2 to turn on. Just do all that snappy, snappy, snap, snap. And yes, the device is all made of plastic. This is just some silver paint around here, so you don't want to drop this too often. I'd usually recommend a case, but this one is so large in a hand that a case may make it a little too large for some people. This is a cross between a tablet and a phone. Uh, I like to think of it as a tablet with a phone functionality, not the other way around, because this is going after a certain market. Those who want something with really good immersive multimedia experience with a large display and footprint and uh, having basically everything built in there. So let's go ahead and open up my timer app. Boom, and we want to see how long it takes this guy to turn on. Power button is here, and three, two, one. Sorry, good. So while it's turning on, let's know the beast, what's into this thing? Well, it is a quad core 1.6 gigahertz processor. It has two gigabytes of RAM, 16 gigs of internal storage, and you can expand that using the micro SD memory card slot that I forgot to show you, but it was in the back, right next to the SIM card slot. It takes a micro SIM card, not nano and not regular, so make sure you know. Oh. And it's done. 20 seconds. Yeah, let's just say it's good to go. <laughs> All right, so 20 seconds to turn on. That's uh, pretty bloody fast, and it should be. Again, we're talking about a lot of horsepower here. So let's see how nice this display by default is set to brightness. Uh, what you did not notice is what happens when you first turn this device on for the first time. There's a tutorial, but as you go through the device, it will have pop-ups. It will have things to scroll through explaining some of the functionality, and that makes sense. Some people may think of it as an inconvenience. However, if you just jump right into this with no manual, this is not a manual by any means of the imagination. Uh, the only way to learn is to do it or just to go through new things and it'll explain to you how they work. So if we go ahead and take out this S Pen the stylus, automatically launches. You see up here, it knows when the pen has been removed, which is really cool. There is a button on the stylus itself. And this is a little longer than the original Galaxy Note 1. Uh, there's a little nub here, which makes it easier to, you can see that nub there, yeah. Make it easier to insert it into the device because you don't know which way it's supposed to go in. There's only one way it can go in nub facing out. Um, but when it is removed, it does know and you can do some really neat things with it. And this is exactly the selling point. Large display, stylus. We'll get to the stylus in a second, but right now let's go through the display and you can see how re responsive it is. Again, there's nothing really on this device, so uh, we have to find ways to tax it. So let's go in and out of the menu as quickly as possible. 
Again, very simple task for this device to do. A lot of horsepower in the background. Not many things could really slow this guy down. Uh, let's change it to animated wallpaper. Click and hold down on the home screen, sure. Let's change the wallpaper for both screens. Live wallpaper, which means animated. And let's throw, uh, let's do deep sea. Cool. Oh, that looks beautiful. <laughs> Very nice. Now, animated wallpaper in the background. See how the background shifts around when you move the phone around? It's really cool. Yeah, look at those bubbles go. Let's try to get in and out of menus. Let's try to navigate. Let's go to widgets. See? Just like that, little tutorials that pop up here and there. You can hide them, not show again. But it does help you along the way. Again, if you are experienced in this device or any other Jelly Bean or Android device, you may have a good idea what to do, but it does help to have those little tutorials there. Uh, this is running Jelly Bean Sound, or uh, Jelly Bean, sorry. <laughs> Jelly Bean Sandwich. Yeah, that would be very delicious. No, it's Jelly Bean, and it's running. Uh, Samsung's TouchWiz interface on top of it. So for example, having these icons and uh, some things are unique that it does run on top of Jelly Beam. So let's, let's see what stuff we can do with the stylus because this is really cool, right? Everyone wants to know. So let's say you want to go like this and say, yo, check this out. Pretend you have something open. There's not much on here, so let's see the time. If you just do a circle, nothing happens. If you click the button here on the stylus or the S Pen and you circle something, boom, it automatically, well, it's supposed to, let's see. Oh, I have to complete the circle. Ah. There we go. So it copies it and says, what do you want to do? Add it to your notepad. You want to send as an email text. You can imagine this is really cool when uh, you're dealing with emails or anything like that to follow up with people and just uh, try to get uh, someone's attention to focus on something on the screen. Let's look at another example. Let's go into the calendar. That's note is too simple. Let's go to calendar here. Where are you? Eh? Where are you? Come on. You're right in front of me. I bet you anything. Do 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 do. You notice also when I'm scrolling over here, you, you see there's a little uh, dot following the stylus. So it knows when you're hovering above the screen, which is really cool. Uh, there's a lot of nice things this can do. Hopefully I can demonstrate that when we go online. But where on earth is that calendar? I think I just lost my mind. <laughs> S Planner, there it is. Okay, so when we're here, if you, uh, you can use you know, your finger to navigate to different months, but if you use the S Pen, you can draw and do things. Uh, for example, actually you have to enable it. Top left corner, hit on that, you can now draw. So whatever gives you a warning message you can hide that you can go here to here uh whoops which that is supposed to be work whatever <laughs> and then uh, you can say here is vacay maybe not as butchered you can also get to different tools so you can erase things very nice uh you have the functionality if you don't want to use these styles or you don't want to um draw you just disable that option up here turn on and off so now you can just use it as a navigation method or turn it back on so you can draw on your calendar. Uh, if you also go into other devices like S Memo, which is very simple, again, you can see there's a little icon down there dedicated just for um, the S Pen's functionality. If we slide this back in, it disappears because you're not using the S Pen, so very intuitive. If the device is locked, you can remove the S Pen, it will wake it up and automatically take you to the shortcut menu because it knows you want to use it if you took it out. You can get to notes, boom. Did I click that? There we go. And uh, you start doing things, and uh, let's get into something funk here. So we know it's really fast, we know it's really badass. Okay, that's cool. So let's go into something else. Let's get into the browser, and let's do some web browsing real quick. Uh, doo -doo -doo. You can download other browsers as well. This is just the default one that comes, but Chrome, Firefox, you know, just a whole bunch that are compatible. I personally love Chrome. We're just going to use the built-in browser. You notice because the S Pen's removed, it opens up a little stylus here where I can draw and write things down because you, it assumes you want to do that. If this was not inserted into the device, or re removed from the device, in order to launch the browser, it would pop up with the keyboard. Makes sense. But the moment you take that S Pen out, serious business, it's going to, when you launch an application, detect that you do want to use the S Pen, which is nice. So let's see how responsive this is. Uh, should be here somewhere. There it is. Okay, there's a shortcut button. Let's see if we can go to Engadget. Look at that. Engadget. Very fast, there's a Wi-Fi connection. Let's go to home page. Mobile version, loaded very quickly. Pinch and zoom is not supported in the mobile websites, that's fine. Put this down a bit. Okay, let's go to the full version. While it's still loading at the top, I want to rotate it. See, very smooth, okay. It's still loading there. It's not showing me any checkerboard, still loading. Very nice, pinch to zoom while it's still loading is very smooth, okay. Let's rotate it. That's what I'm talking about. Still loading, and look how smooth this damn thing is. It has no excuse with quad core at 1.6 gigahertz and 2 gigs of RAM. So very nice. It's almost done. While it's still doing that, let's pinch to zoom. And here's a practical example. 
Let's find something, a baseline mod pro, whatever. Say, like, yo, check out this tablet, man. Click on the button here, circle this, and you can now choose to um, email this to someone or you know, text message or anything like that. And say, hey, check out what I just saw. If you don't like it, you can hit the X, or you can wait a few seconds and it'll go away by itself. Bam. So very nice. Let's uh, get into something else. Since we opened up an article, I'm gonna pinch the zoom so you can see just how clear this text is. As you can imagine, this is a 1280 by 720p display. Uh, some argue that the pixel, oh, actually, as a matter of fact, the pixel density is not as, you know, as much, let's say, as the iPhone 5, but it makes very good use of the Super AMOLED display and everything looks extremely clear. And this is what it should be since people do sometimes want to use this device for reading or uh, doing other multimedia related items or uh, actions. So this is done. Let's go to YouTube. So I don't want to go over time here. And it's built into the device. Do one. Let's do an audio test, video test, and all that. Let's look for the 300 trailer. 300. Cool, eh? Space. This is so cool. <laughs> this is so much more fun than using the keyboard. All right, we're done. What I do? Hit search. All right. Loading done. Uh, 16 million views. Yeah, sure. Why not, man? So let's put the volume all the way up. The volume button's on the left side. Let's see how quickly it rotates. Nice. Audio's coming from back here. Nope, we'll close that. I guess I forgot to, that's okay. So let's skip to a part where there's some noise. It's nice, it's not incredibly loud. It's still very reasonable for this video. It's very nice, let's see how quickly it streams. Very nice, and you can, yes. This is totally acceptable, that's excellent. So quick to rotate, good, decent audio volume, and uh, it does buffer very quickly when going to different parts of the video. So that's nice to see, let's get out of here. And uh, yeah, I can't really complain with that. So next step, let's take a look at how other things look, contacts, there's nothing really in here, but uh, I did want to show you something. I don't know if there's a website I can go to really quickly. Um, when you go to, you'll notice when you go to a website, if it has a drop down menu that doesn't involve tapping, but just hovering above the link with your mouse on a normal computer, you'll notice I'm not clicking the screen, but it's detecting where the stylus is. So if there's a drop down menu there, all I have to do is hover over it and the drop down menu would open. Great for shopping, great for very heavy websites where you want to have full navigation. So instead of clicking the main tab, the drop down menu will open and then you choose from what you want and then you click. So that's another cool thing. Can't really demonstrate it here, but I think this does a really good indicator of how it works when you mouse over or stylus or S Pen over an object, it does highlight because it knows that's where you're going to be. Um, in terms of performance from the Galaxy Note 1, the significant differences here to keep in mind is the sheer fact that this guy here is optimized better to make use of the stylus pen. Uh, they try making things a lot better. They try introducing more tutorials to get people oriented with how to use this device. And uh, in the end, he did an exceptionally well job. I only wish I had more content on here so I can show you the full functionality, but to be honest, there's so much it can do that just boggles the mind and this just takes it a step further. It's very smooth, you know, quad core and two gigs of RAM. You shouldn't have any problems with slowing it down or any issues of that nature. Um, and you know, this S Pen thing, some people see it as a gimmick, but again, with the display this large, you can totally use it for notes, taking screenshots, collaborating with other individuals, using it for WebEx conferences, or even just using it for Facebook or uh, Twitter or anything like that. It's really, really cool. Uh, the older Samsung uh, Galaxy Note 1 had a 2500 milliamp hour battery. This one's a 3100 milliamp hour battery larger display, and it has LTE support, which you can turn it on or off as you wish, but it just results in incredible, incredible speeds, at least here in Canada, the Toronto area. LTE download speeds were approximately 45 to 48 megabits per second, and upload was about two. So not bad at all. Uh, you can go ahead and turn off those options and tailor it, see, uh, sorry, tailor it to it as you see fit, but it's just an incredible, wonderful full package device if it's right for you. In closing remarks, this is a very large phone. This is not for everybody. It is obnoxiously large by some comparison to other devices like the Galaxy S3 or the Blackberry or in a little pop up here, this video I took comparing the Galaxy S1, 2, 3 and the Note 2. You can see there's a significant difference in size. So Absolutely, this is not meant for everybody in the marketplace. This is those who want to take full advantage of multimedia content and edit, reading and anything of that nature with a very large display. And this is the stylus being or the S Pen being a nice little bonus. Um, there's, a, there's nice little small things that are included, like going on to the small things. Uh, you do get 50 gigabytes of Dropbox storage the moment you get this device, which is great because you can set an option so that whenever you take a picture, it will automatically synchronize to your Dropbox account on a Wi-Fi or over the network. So you always have a backup of your pictures immediately on Dropbox, which synchronizes to your desktop. So you never have to tether or connect this to your computer. Use a micro SIM card, which is very, or SIM card slot, which is very important. Expandable memory, which is very nice as well 
well because I found myself filling up my Galaxy S3 very quickly with 16 gigs. You can put out up to 64 gigs of micro SD expandable memory, which is amazing. And uh, the little tutorials that pop up here and there that help you use the device better and make full advantage of its features is exceptional. And I love having it pop up. It does irritate some people who are you know, pretty, pretty familiar with the software, but if you are new to the whole Jelly Bean and uh, TouchWiz interface, it will help you a lot to make full advantage of this device. Battery time is not too bad. I can manage to get through a full day of use with this guy. Uh, it only gets better over time, but my secret, my secret is to charge it always while it's off. If I can't, fine, but most of the time I charge it while it's off so that the battery is always fully charged and not always being used. Well, hopefully I answered some questions here for you today. Again, this is Elias Planakos from Wireless Insider. If you have any comments or questions, please leave it in the comments section below. And uh, yeah, if you like this video, just give it a like and please subscribe. Until next time, take care.